Hello, Brian Freer Robot here, with a quick message from the Vonu podcast regarding the fast approaching selection. The thing is, we don't have anything to say, that we haven't said 1000 times already, really. Shocker, I know. Our friends, Richard Dick Greaser and Rod Palmer from the Bitcoin Bugle took care of that for us, and much better than we ever could, with these amazing selection advertisements. Please enjoy. Make sure to follow the Bitcoin Bugle wherever you can, and find Richard Greaser's music at libertyunderattack.com. Brian Freero Bot, out. This November is the most important election of our lifetimes. In eight days, we can finally vote to solve all our problems and make the economy fine for another generation. This is our one shot to pump up Bitcoin, bring peace to the Middle East, ban seed oils, and get your pedophile neighbor to take down their stupid Ukraine flag. If we don't win in November, we're stuck in the matrix for four more years. If you have no agency or authority over your own life and you are beholden to the efforts of politicians, you understand the urgency of this election. The only power you have over your future is your one single vote. Don't waste it. Vote as hard as you can. Your future depends on it. Dennis Porter will help fix our broken system as he orange pills his way to the White House in 2028. But in the meantime, Exercise your right in a healthy democracy to vote. It's time to show the world what Bitcoin podcast listeners are made of. My name is Gilbert Norris, and I'm a member of the Intellectual Silk Road. I'm a father, a husband, a pleb miner, a raw milk enjoyer, and a cypherpunk. I wear pleated khakis and tuck my shirt in, but don't let that fool you. I'm still an anarchist. As a Bitcoiner, I don't have any problems paying my taxes. I never simped for Michael Saylor. I've never bought KYC Bitcoin. And I was one of the first 100 people on Nostra. Why am I telling you all of this? Because I want you to know how I think about the choices in this election. It comes down to this one simple question. Would you rather be scammed or censored? Would you rather transact adversarially in the free market full of shitcoins and scammers or be silenced by humorless zealots? I think the choice is clear. Think about these two choices when you cast your vote in this election. In a stunning turn of events that even South Park couldn't have predicted, our choices for President of the United States are down to the two worst possible candidates. In one week, Americans must decide between a fascist and a retard. People have been frantically trying to determine which is worse. Is Hitler worse than a drooling retard? People on podcasts insist Hitler had at least some good ideas, but can a retard protect the country from all the Hitlers we didn't vote for? Is this really the best America has to offer? Is this all our great institutions and traditions are able to produce? Unfortunately, yes, this is it. It all boils down to fascism versus communism, the assholes versus the retards. But what if there was a third option? Well, there isn't. You have to pick between the assholes and retards. So make up your mind and decide if you want to be able to afford to pay taxes or if you want to take a shit in the women's bathroom. Bitcoin fixes everything but not overnight. In the meantime, you have to vote. Not every decision is easy, but you have to decide or you will be subject to whichever asshole or retard wins. So let me be clear. What can be, unburdened by what has been, And Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. We are progressive Bitcoiners for Kamala Harris, and these are our stories. In your own words, why do you believe progressives need Bitcoin? When I think about why progressives need Bitcoin, I think of trans folks who face an inordinate amount of economic struggles, not least of which is the gender pay gap. After completing their transition, Many trans women find themselves taking 20% pay cuts and unable to afford their taxes. I'm Jennifer from Texas, and this is my story. That's why I believe progressives need Bitcoin. On November 5th, a Bitcoiner will be selected into the White House. Both candidates, Kamala Harris and Adolf Hitler, have embraced Bitcoin and crypto. 
making this the most important selection in our nation's history. While it's not public who you vote for, it sure is public if you voted or not. That way boomers who deeply care about our democracy can harass and shame you for not voting. Remember if you vote, you have no right to complain because you are helping to select non-compliant criminals into office. But voting is our sacred duty. Our generation's grandfathers stormed the beaches of Normandy in order to save the Jews from the Holocaust. So the nation of Israel could be founded in order for your tax dollars to go towards funding the Iron Dome. Voting is your sacred duty because you exist only for two reasons. You exist to vote in order to give legitimacy to government and two, to generate tax dollars for government to export democracy to places that don't want it. Savages living peacefully around the world need to be conquered in order to serve US corporations and to enlighten them to the wonders of gender and democracy. You can see why the selection is so high stakes and requires you to participate in it. Both candidates have made so many promises to do so many great things for you. Both have promised to print a lot of money in order to make Bitcoin go up. Both have promised to make things cheaper while at the same time make taxes affordable. Fortunately, both candidates feel strongly about using million dollar missiles to shoot down thousand dollar missiles. But you can only vote for one of them and the choice is yours. This is the most important selection in the history of the world. That is until Dennis Porter runs in 2028. Make sure to get to the polls to vote in person. But if you can't, follow Ted Kaczynski's advice and vote by mail. This is the story of a soldier who operates our Patriot missile systems. It begins in California with a girl who was raised by two moms who think that Lynn Alden is hot. Although I had a typical childhood, went to government ran schools, God made fun of for having lesbian moms. I had the opportunity to grow up at pride parades where I got to see men in drag dance around almost naked from a very young age. I like to think I've been defending freedom from an early age. When I was six years old, one of my moms had an accident that left her paralyzed. Doctors said she might not ever walk again, but she tapped into our family's gay pride to get back on her feet. Eventually standing at the altar to marry my other mom when it became legal. With such powerful role models, I finished high school at the top of my class. I attended college at UC Davis and joined a sorority with other powerful women. But as graduation approached, I began to really see all my white privilege I had been handed. A sorority girl stereotype. Sure, I had been made fun of for having two moms, but what had I really achieved on my own? I needed my own adventures, my own challenge. And after meeting with an army recruiter, I found it. A way to prove my inner strength and shatter some stereotypes along the way. This is US Army Corporal Lily Wong Goldberger Stein. And no matter who America selects this November, whether they select inspiring Kamala or Adolf Hitler, you will have a chance to answer your calling with the US Army. What calls you? Visit goarmy.com slash the calling to see what calls others. And to close it out, here's the newest hit track from credentialed journalist, Richard Greaser. It's called Typical Politician. Wake up, on over from low and hookers the night before. Pop some Adderall and get me out of bed and walk over to the shower door. I hold my slogging in my hand and start stroking it as I look in the mirror. Get ready for a press conference, a climax as I think about myself on TV without fear. The reporters want to know why we are blowing up the Middle East. Wait, the Elias want to know why they can't have a bigger feast. Man, this is such a pain being a politician. So much responsibility. Short and stock on inside info because democracy is civility. The reporters want to know why we are blowing up the Middle East. Wait, the Elias want to know why they can't have a bigger feast. Man, this is such a pain being a politician. So much responsibility. Short and stock on inside info because democracy is civility. Standing in front of the reporters, my dick is getting a little bit hard. Think about people who are watching me on the TV, man, I know they are a bunch of tarts. Get a text from Epstein, get a text from Diddy. My phone is blowing up, gross fantasies make me giddy. I laugh as I think about all the dead kids in Ukraine. Thinking about lunch where the lucky lobbyists will get brain. Hop on Twitter to slander my political rival Gotta make him look real bad for my own survival Can't stop thinking about sex and myself Thinking about getting a midget, those sexy elves I can't get enough time To 
look at myself in the mirror Why is it considered a crime To act corrupt and moral so clear This is the life of a politician Keeping secrets and telling lies Like spinning past me Oh how time flies Shit. I know that I am the definition of hypocrite But I don't really care because I get what I want Being among the law is something that I could flaunt My constituents can't afford taxes or to own a home But we tax them so we can continue funding the Iron Dome There's crisis domestically, but I'd rather do fraud abroad Don't dare to tell me my logic's flawed Standing in front of the reporters My dick is getting a little bit hard Think of the people who are watching me on the TV Man, I know they are a bunch of tarts Ha, ha, ha.